south of Road G, east of Road 38, situated in Section 12, Township 35 North, Range 14 West, NMPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019 at 1 p.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information be, may be obtained from the Planning Office, Room 270, Administrative Offices, Cortez, Colorado, or assessed online at http colon forward slash forward slash montezumacounty.org forward slash web forward slash departments forward slash planning forward slash. You may also contact the planning department at 970-565-2801 with questions. The file can be inspected in the planning department during regular office hours. Dated this 20th day of August, 2019. Kim Purcell, Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, published in the journal on Tuesday, August 13th, 2019. Thank you, Lynn. Is Mr. Mominy in the audience? Yes, yes he, is. he is. Would you like to come up with uh, Don and Jane? And sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, Don, tell us what. Uh, so, Mr. Mominy has applied for a special use permit um, that's required per the land use code. A meat processing facility is guidelined as an um, industrial agribusiness, so that requires a special use permit. Um, in his application, um, with the attachments, um, he's done everything he can to uh, mitigate noise, smell, um, traffic, um, everything self-contained within an existing building um, with some additional pins built that will be inside the building as well. Um, in review of, of the operation, what's planned, what's proposed, he will not exceed any threshold standards, therefore he doesn't need to apply for a high impact permit at this time. Okay. How did planning and zoning uh, treat the they, uh, they reviewed um, the application as well. Um, there was lots of public comment as far as odor and noise, which everything is contained in the building. Um, so they, they deemed that as being mitigated. And they voted unanimously to uh, approve to move it forward for your consideration and approval. Do you have any questions? Just an additional information that I believe there was a 500 head a year um, number that was discussed and agreed upon, but I'm going to say that I, I believe that that number should be taken off because it doesn't say anything about that in the land use code, and we don't count the number of head with our other processing plants, so I think that that would uh, cause a problem to leave that number there. It should be taken off. Why, <clears throat> why was the restriction put on? I mean, there was just concern on how big it might get and how large it might grow. And Mr. Mominy actually volunteered himself to uh, put a, a limit on it just because he does not foresee it exceeding that in the near future. <coughs> uh, but what if it's sold and it does exceed that? I don't, I would agree with Commissioner Supla that to, to <coughs> put a restriction on a on a business that co could potentially grow, I mean, we don't restrict other businesses for growth. That was just something that he offered up just as a concession <coughs> because of the uh, many comments that, that road um, and dust <coughs> traffic might get exceeded. Um, we explained that if that was the case, if he exceeds threshold standards, then he would have to come back to the planning and zoning office and apply for a high impact permit. Mm -hmm. And that would go through the same review process. I mean, I think that's an important point. If, yeah. if this business does grow, if it gets approved yeah. and grows, uh, then likely we're talking about exceeding threshold standards and it would require coming back. Right. And doing a high impact permit. Yeah, so that one, that would take care of any anything getting, okay. Any other Would questions? Speak up. Speak up. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. Any Thank other you. questions, commissioners? Uh, not at this time. I'd like to listen okay. to the. All right. Uh, we'll now take this uh, <coughs> to the public comment. If anybody here wishes to address the commissioners on this issue, please come to the podium and state your name, your address, and uh, tell us what your concerns are. Good afternoon, commissioners. Rob Pope, 311 North Broadway. I was on the planning commission when this came through and was um, part of the process. I wanted to comment on a few things. Um, we're pretty diligent when we review this stuff. Um, as already stated, most of the issues have to do with traffic and particulates dust, uh, odor, noise, lighting, and uh, uh, the surrounding properties. Um, the area that it was in, was, there was existing corrals there. Uh, it was already used for agricultural. The traffic, residential is 15 round trips a day. They won't even exceed that. That's a residential threshold. Um, the noise, the handling of the animals is all indoors. Even when they come in, they don't even feed them there. They can only be held uh, for a certain length of time. They're not fed and they are, the crowds are indoors. Um, I did two trips out there one before the meeting and one after to look at the concerns of some of the neighbors. I didn't see any exterior lighting. I may be wrong, but I didn't see any. Um, the property location in the surrounding area, is, it fits right in with what it was. Um, we reviewed, you talked about 500 head of cattle. The only way that I saw, and I think he should grow it as much as he wants, but the as far as building new facilities to handle extra cattle, that would have to go through the review process. I don't know what his refrigeration capacity is for hanging beef, but if he wanted to put in a second shift and he has a refrigeration capacity, he might be able to exceed 500 head uh, just by putting on a second shift if he has the refrigeration capacity to do it. I think the facility has the capacity to move the animals through there. There was a comment made that insinuated that somehow money or family relationships has something to do with this approval process. I can assure you that's not true. And it kind of minimizes comments when comments like that are made with no substantiation. You know what, we're a, we're a group of guys that take our job seriously there's none of that stuff that goes on. Uh, I personally never knew Mr. Mominy, never met him before. Um, so what, and I stated this at the beginning of the meeting, back when we had the meeting, I was happy to see a processor come to the county. And that seemed to be construed as a blanket approval of it. And we were kind of called to task for saying that. Well, it's our job to have an opinion. And I stand by opinion. I'm glad somebody came in here and was going through the process to start a USDA plant. We need one. County need one. You know, we don't like to haul our li livestock across state lines. So I just wanted you guys to be aware, we did a real full job checking this out. And not only has he mitigated it, but he has went above and beyond what he really needs to do. So I applaud him in his efforts to be a first class operator in the area, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pope. <coughs> Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to this issue? My name is Douglas Doty. I live at 38294 Road G. Um, I share a southern and part of a western property line with Mr. Mominy. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Mr. Mominy doesn't live in our neighborhood. He doesn't even live in the state. 
I commend his desire to create a productive, profitable, and diverse ranching operation. He appears to be doing a good job of following best practices within the boundaries of his property. I cannot commend his disregard for the property rights and values of his neighbors. Prior to building, he did not apply to the county for the necessary use permits, nor did he have the common courtesy to talk with his neighbors of his intentions. We are now in a situation where he's seeking retroactive, appro retroactive approval for a new building built for the purpose of a slaughterhouse. In the permit application, it states, the meat processing units are being placed in an existing equipment building that has been retrofitted. That's not accurate. This is a newly built addition to a slightly older but still new equipment building, which he built since purchasing the property in 19, 2015. The septic system was installed this summer. It appears that this project is in violation of both the letter and the spirit of the Montezuma County Land Use Code, section 2201.1, paragraph B. I also understand the desire of Mr. Mominy and other small cattle producers to have a USDA approved slaughterhouse in Montezuma County. Such a facility located in an industrial area would be a boost to the local agricultural economy and a boost to the cattleman's bottom line. The desire of potential customers is not a legitimate reason to approve this project. Property rights exist on both sides of the fence and overwhelmingly our side of the fence does not want this slaughterhouse. We are subject to the adverse impacts on our quality of life and our property values to improve the bottom line of others. In several conversations with Mr. Mominy since this permit process was initiated, he said, trust me, I want to trust him. I want to believe that his facility will not have a negative impact on our neighborhood. I'm fairly confident that he has a plan to contain most of the internal processes if all goes according to his plans. Noise is one area that I believe he is underestimating. The construction noise for the past years while these buildings were being built has been excessive but tolerated because there was an end point. The noise of 10 or more hungry because they're not being fed, displaced, removed from their home herd cows 24 hours a day, every weekend, all year is a serious adverse impact in our neighborhood. And again, for those who don't think it is, I invite you to come sleep in my bedroom once it's up and going. If you should see fit to approve this permit, we request that certain limits and practices be included. One, a limit of 500 animals per year is already agreed upon. Two, any expansion of slaughter operations would take place at some other already established industrial zone. Three, the ongoing noise of 10 hungry, displaced, and about to die cattle exceed the existing normal, that's what's before this facility is in operation, then an effective sound barrier be constructed between the slaughterhouse and our neighboring houses to mitigate such noise. Monitor the water quality in the Mancus River below the leach field for additional pollutants, both biological and chemical. All lighting be directed downward as recommended in the land use code. Direct all customers when delivering animals to stay on the paved roads of H and or 39. And in the words of Ronald Reagan, trust but verify. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak to this? We're going to limit our time frames to three minutes per person, so. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for giving us the opportunity to give our input and our concerns on the special use permit proposed for the slaughterhouse and meat processing facility. Um, Could you Mr. state Mominis. your name and address, please? Oh, name is Sarah Staver. Um, address is 7290 Road 39. We sort of met last year when I created the parcel that I want to build my home on there that is going to be impacted um, potentially by this. Um, my husband and I own right there, if you remember, on Road 39, which sort of touches corners um, across Road 39 from the applicant's main parcel. Um, th th this parcel that we're talking about is sort of enclosed 
encapsulated in his larger holding. Um, so one thing we really wanted to make the point about is that none of us, a lot of us here are within very close distance of the property, but we weren't notified um, because of the, um, the way the, the notifications work within 500 feet or something, mm -hmm. but it does impact a lot of people. So um, I, I would ask you to sort of look at that process and maybe for something that's sort of an industrial use like this to expand <coughs> your parameters or at least look at who you might be affecting because I think that would be really helpful to us because it came as a surprise to all of us. Um, you know, first of all, I want to make it clear that I support agriculture and the rural nature of our town. Mancus is a small area. I have many friends and neighbors that are agricultural. Many of them are here and we historically help each other and work together on the land, on our ditches and in contributing to keep Mancus a viable community. Um, I guess what I'm going to ask is to ask you to give us some, some specifics because the code is vague and these specifics would help us get along neighbor to neighbor. So there's, I'm not opposing the um, idea. Mr. Momney, he doesn't live at his property. He lives at another one of his properties in the area. He has several holdings. However, we did meet him for the first time last week and he very graciously did a site tour with us. He seems like a good addition to the area um, and his facilities seem tidy and well constructed. He answered a lot of our questions and seemed to have a solid plan for his business, which included processing only 10 animals per week, which he said would more than service his needs. Um, however, the possible expansion does remain a concern and was never directly addressed as to whether this may become part of a long range plan or an additional profit source. Um, I think uh, you might have touched on this, but uh, I did have a couple of questions. Um, does a special use permit have a duration? You know, is there a sunset on it? Does it expire? And does it run with a property if it's sold? Okay. All right. Thank yes you for and your yes. comments, ma'am. No, I'm not, I'm not finished yet. Well, your but three minutes are up. So, so just to answer, the special use permit does not expire or sunset um, unless there's a condition that it'll be reviewed in a X amount of months or, or years or on an annual basis. Um, it does not necessarily stay with the property. Um, if that property is sold, then the uh, new applicant would have to come in and um, apply for that special use permit in their name under their conditions because the conditions might change just because one operation worked this way it may vary may have different standards exceed part of the threshold standards we don't know until we deal with the new property owner and if it does expand it will go to a high impact permit and go through the process again correct Okay, I appreciate that answer because we didn't think to ask that before. Um, I think I've been given some more time by some other people that were <laughs> going to speak. So, um, uh, you know, this stuff's important. And, you know, it will help us get along as neighbors if we can come to some agreements here and that you also understand our position. You know, we, you know, we keep hearing this is about ag uses in the county and we support ag uses you know we, we've supported it in Mancos um, but from what I understand in the county land use code section 3106 and I apologize for reading but I don't know your code by heart like you may but it says that this use is more than any of the normal agricultural uses as defined and listed in the code those uses do not include slaughterhouses and meat processing facilities. That's covered in Section D as an industrial agribusiness. So I just think we need to be clear that this it just isn't regular ag, it's an industrial agribusiness. So thus the special use permit, which by definition is for uses that have potentially greater impact than uses by right. So the applicants and the neighbors' rights are those that you guys get to decide here. Um, the special use permit specifically states that such uses should not cause water pollution, excess noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odor, heat, or glare from lighting. I know you said it doesn't, it, 
isn't above the threshold standards, but the threshold standards aren't specific. There seem to be no specific criteria um, for this type of use itself. And in the code, section 1201 says the function of the stress threshold standard is to assure landowners that surrounding land uses will not exceed the established standards, which aren't there, unless appropriate mitigation measures have been approved and applied. It also says that development should not cause adverse effects on adjacent properties and defining those effects as any impact that creates an increased risk to health, safety, or welfare of the citizens of the county, a significant reduction in neighboring property values, or unfavorable or harm harmful consequences. You know, I just want you to perhaps look at some of these things may exist. So, you know, I would like to request that some conditions are put on the permit. And it's not to restrict Mr. Mominy, it's really to give us predictability and give us not to be unreasonable or onerous, but just give everyone a clear idea of what this will look like. Um, he offered to limit it to 500 animals a year. You know, he said that more than would cover his current use. I think that was a, a very generous thing and it should be considered. I also think we should consider maybe reviewing it annually or biannually. Um, as planning said could be done and that could be a condition you know as far as lighting goes um, he did show us lights on the building and um, that they just it should be a condition and checked that the, any exterior lights would be shielded and downward facing and not on 24 hours a day um, noise I think one important thing we did notice about the facility which as I said was very tidy but it's not clearly depicted and it's been said repeatedly that it's all enclosed the, the cattle pens are within an addition to the metal building, and it, but it's open at the bottom. And for good reason, it's open for airflow. But just as that will allow air in, it will allow sound out. So it's up about two feet on three sides, and the sides are those that are um, facing the adjacent neighbors. Um, so I think that you could get the noise, you're going to have noise resounding in a metal building from displaced stock um, that haven't been fed and have been, or stressed out a little bit. You know, so I'd like to request some specific standards. I know that the um, decibel standards in the, the, that's the one standard that really is specifically in the code and it's 70 decibels. But when I looked that up, that's equivalent to standing next to very loud traffic. So if you had 70 decibels going, you know, 12 hours a day um, on your property line, that's a lot of noise. So I'd like, and, and decibels, so if people don't know, decibels are not linear, like 60 decibels, 70 decibels. That 10 decibels is a logarithmic amount, which, which is increasing the 60 decibels tenfold. So it's not linear like we're used to. Um, and, and even 60 decibels, they said it's hard to have a conversation over if you had 60 decibels inside. So I don't think 60 is an unreasonable request and have some sort of monitoring. Um, odors, uh, you know, I, I think he has a plan for dealing with that. But again, you know, in the code, just so you know, it talks about agric agricultural operations best practices, maintenance, and you know, this again isn't just a regular ag operation. So I think that, that someone could be requested to do something over and above what a normal ag would do because this is an industrial use. The same applies to dust. Um, I think that um, it is very dusty there. You know, when we live downwind of the odor and the dust. And I think on delivery days, it should be required to mag chloride the road or uh, water the road or have mag chloride on it previously. And I don't think I don't think that's unreasonable. And you know, all these things would prevent neighbors having to complain because you don't have enforcement on any of these issues. So it sort of pits us against each other. But if we have some basic guidelines out front, I think it would really help the neighborhood. And then, you know, we're not being asked to be the tattletales and enforcers on our neighbor. You know, this is a new thing for us. You know, also water pollution. Um, I think Doug mentioned having a, um, a site, because this is right on the, you know, on the Mancus River, having a site there to monitor it and, you know, hopefully Mr. Mominy would be amenable to paying that expense just to make sure we all get along. 
I, I just don't think this is onerous or that much to ask, and it would go a long way towards keeping, keeping peace in the neighborhood. Um, you know, I think that also, um, you know, the owner of the property that I, I used to own um, has it now for sale, and he told me he had a showing this last week that went poorly because of this. He did write a letter that should be in your records for the planning commission that I read at the last meeting, so I won't do that. But um, the realtor who was involved, he did have her contact me, and that um, she read, she wrote a letter about the proposed facility, and which says, I'm a realtor out of La Plata and Montezuma County, currently working for the Wells Group. I recently showed a home located, located at 7348 Road 39 in Mancos. My buyer's been interested in this property for several years, even before the current owner purchased it. The rural setting and quiet surroundings set this property apart. Driving down the winding county road brought excitement to my buyer in that they loved the idea of settling in an area where you can breathe fresh air, watch wildlife, and enjoy the outdoors. A few days prior to my buyer's arrival, she read an article in the Durango Herald about a small meat processing plant could start up near Mancos. Upon arrival on August 29th, the buyer and I headed straight to rural Mancos. On the drive over, she mentioned her strong concerns about the slaughterhouse and its close proximity to the property. The buyers do come from a rural area back east, so are familiar with agricultural uses, but have never experienced a business such as this so close to residential properties that could affect their smells, traffic, and noise. They were surprised that county code would allow such a use in this type of rural farming and ranch settling. At the end of the day, she decided that this home and land would not be a good financial investment because of the slaughterhouse going in less than a half mile away. She and I both felt that this could lower home values in the area and would have a negative impact on the rural ranch setting. 10 animals a week could turn into 20, then 30 or more as demand increases. That, it's a perception, and we realize that. It's a perception, and it's all going to have to do with how this, how this happens if you go ahead and approve it. So I'm really, really asking you to consider um, giving us some concrete guidelines that we can all work together on. And I have a copy of the letter from the realtor, and I have sort of a rough draft of some of the conditions that I proposed, and the decibel standards if you want those. Could I submit these? Sure. Yes, ma'am. To whom? Right <laughs> Appreciate your time. Good job. <coughs> Anybody else wish to address the commission? My name's John Patton. I live on Road G, about a mile east of the proposed uh, slaughterhouse on Tom Colbert's old property. Tom Colbert was a friend of mine. We bought some property from him 25 years ago, 23 years ago. Uh, whether I would have bought it with the slaughterhouse down the street, I don't know. It, it depends. I probably wouldn't. Uh, I like Dan Mominy. He's a nice guy. He's very upright, forthright. Surely we can put a slaughterhouse in this country, which I understand is needed, closer to a commercial area or in a commercial area instead of a large residential <coughs> ranch area. I just don't see any logic to this. It needs, we need it in the county. You maybe want 1,000 cows slaughtered a year or 2,000. It will totally disrupt our neighborhood. Traffic will be incredibly bad. The roads, as you well know, are gravel coming to this property. I, I think you need to put it off as a responsible commissioners. And it needs to be here. I don't deny that. And I think Mr. Momney would be a great person to build one and run one. But this is not the place for it. Track is difficult to get to. Certain times of the year, it's impossible to get to and hard for the county to keep the maintenance up. That's about all I have to say, and I didn't even extend my three minutes. Thank you, sir. Afternoon. 
Robin Strother, 40066 Road G, Mancus. Um, I, I just want to address a couple of points. One is that, you know, it's interesting that this problem could go away if he would relocate that uh, facility 200 yards to the south. A as you look at that property from where our neighbors, the Dodies, live, um, there is no doubt that it is going to adversely impact the value of their land. Um, it's, a, it's a problem that could easily be solved. I don't know that it's something that you think that you can address here today, but there is another thing that I n do think that you can address. You've talked about limits on the numbers of animals, uh, and you don't particularly care for that. Let me remind you that the plan that forms the basis for this application does in fact limit the number of animals, is specifically the, uh, the septic system that's been engineered for a limited number of animals per week. And I think that it's incumbent upon you to, when you issue an ap uh, uh, this application, require the applicant to live within the confines of the design that he has submitted to you and the number of animals that are uh, permitted pursuant to the septic plan. Thanks. Uh, just one note, the septic system is designed for 200 gallons per day. And basically the only thing entering the system is when they wash everything down after processing. None of the uh, guts, <laughs> for lack of a better word, um, during the slaughter part, it's all contained in drums frozen in the freezer and sold. So if, I, if I might respond, uh, the, the septic system, the, the engineering plan does specify, I believe, 15 animals a week. And they're saying that they, it's designed for that. You might double check me, but I think that's exactly what you the plan the says. You think the septic permit has had a number of animal processes per week? Uh, I believe it does. Oh, okay. Well, I believe we'll it check does. That. Can you, I, I've never heard of a system being designed for It's per It's based off 200 day. gallons per day. Correct. There is some it's narrative in there as far as 15 animals per week. That exceeds the 10 animals per week. I could look, I, I don't know the exact figures, but it's based off 200 <laughs> gallons per day, which is how a septic system is designed. What, what else do you have in there that's going to use water that would ever get you to 200 gallons a day? That's a lot of, that's a lot of water. The, <clears throat> the system, the, the animal count comes down to, we had to specify for the designer. So it's a design system. Craig Wickstrom was the design engineer for the system. Um, the system itself, if you were to operate this with a residential system is over designed even f for that so in other words it's much greater than the design is much greater than even the numbers show the 15 animals was really calculated a calculation that they used to determine the, uh, the bio um, amount so <clears throat> the the technology of this particular system has to be able to digest what goes in there's not there's one restroom in the facility that services there so the biomass that's going in that would support the, um, um, the um, digesting um, creatures, bacteria, basically can be overpowered by a certain amount of blood. So we had to pick a number in order to come up with um, an amount. And it wasn't a limitation. It was a limitation on whether or not we would use aeration. The other way that this system could process more animals, if it if it needed to, was that you could have added an aerator um, that adds oxygen that helps the breakdown of the blood. So the system was designed based on the manufacturer's estimates of washdown water and the amount of blood contaminant that would be going into the system um, over that period of time. And that was designed um, basically so that the tank was sized without aeration. My fear of using aeration is if the power goes out or you have some other type of problem, then you have then you don't know what's going on. So the system was sized to not require aeration for 15 animals a day, which was a 50% safety factor over what we were going to do. The conversion to gallons of water was based on um, the uh, um, manufacturer's recommendation of how much water would be used 
over that period of time. So it's kind of a convoluted way to get to it, but the, the, we won't use anywhere close to that amount of water. It's really the sizing for aeration so or not. So 15 animals a day a times 365. A I think that's a, a week. A week. Oh, that's a week. A week. Because you yep. said a day. Okay. I'm sorry. I may have, mis may, may have misspoke. We, we sized everything around uh, what our plan was, which was 10 animals um, per week for 50 weeks of operation. That's the 500 animals that you hear going through. When we designed the septic system, we had to kind of go backwards from what we planned to operate, build on some safety factor, and then size the system. Because so. that would be 750, 50 weeks at 15 animals a day. Yeah, that's, there's a 50, we, I requested a 50% safety factor on the septic system over and above what we had. So, so the, you're well within your yes, the criteria. Yes, the, the and, and with aeration and with, if you, if you added aeration, which is a common practice in septic systems, um, the system itself is, is from a size wise is, is oversized um, it's a, it's um, so that so the concept of the size of the system relation to the to that was basically based on a 50% safety factor over how we were designing to operate so all told if you look at the amount of water that's used it's the other side of the water issue that's we use very little water um, if, you, if you take that uh, even at 50 gallons per animal um, over the 500 animals it's it's um, you know basically around a month's use of domestic water um, as far as the downlight do you have any issues with taking care of the downlighting instead the, of the lights that they shine yeah I, <clears throat> I met with a group of the neighbors and we walked around the 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 downlighting um, there is really no exterior lighting now. The building that we enclosed, as we mentioned in the permit, the building, I, I did indeed build the building, um, um, but there was an open section. We moved the equipment storage to the open section. The open section had the lights in it. When we closed that section, all the lights basically went interior. So we walked around the, the exterior of the facility. I showed um, the neighbors where the lights were. In later conversations, the concerns really weren't coming from that location. Um, on the property is a residence of our ranch manager, and it's the porch lights of the ranch manager that were the offending lights. So I've talked with the um, ranch manager and their family and explained that the, the lights were, where the lights were and the amount of time that they were on and uh, the direction of them if they could adjust that. And they, they assured me that they would do that. But it was not this facility. It was the, the right. home, right. home. Yes. Okay. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak to this issue? M. B. McAfee, two 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 seven seven County Road twenty. I was at the P and Z meeting, and um, a lot of the people that are here now were at that meeting. I think that. Um, Mrs. Stabler, um, Staber really summarized the comments very well. I think this is an opportunity for you as commissioners to take a leadership role, show that you've listened to the community, show that you want to do something about improving, tweaking, if you will, our land use code and putting some conditions on that I think maybe have already been talked about with the neighbors and Mr. Mominy. I, I think this is an opportunity to actually bridge something that feels divisive and uh, like there's anonymity. Whereas I, I think this is something that can be overcome. If you make a unanimous decision and you're going to do this blanket statement like the PNZ did, except for Mr. Mominy's voluntary 500 head a week, a year, I'm sorry, 500 head a year. I, I think this is an opportunity to really listen to the neighbors and actually make some decisions based on some of the things that are brought to your attention that might be really worth a little bit further consideration. For instance, 
down the road, if this becomes a very successful operation, Mr. Mominy is a businessman. He's used to investing in something, watching it grow, and adding to it if it seems successful. That's how businessmen do things. You all know that because you're all businessmen. So in the future, how is this going to look? Is this area going to be big enough for a twice the size of what he wants to do now? I mean, I just think it's worthwhile for some conversation. And I'm really very nervous that you're going to suddenly, not suddenly, but without much thought, that I will be able to see, and that, unless you've had a lot of conversation among yourselves, which I expect you have, this is your opportunity to show that you've actually been listening and there are some things that you think should really be considered for our land use code. Good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Felicity Brennan, 38330 and 38384, County Road G. Uh, I'm the property next to the Dodies. I'm directly across from Mr. Nominee's property. In fact, my property is 500 feet from the proposed facility. W were you noticed in the? Yes, I was. Okay. I was the only one noticed. Okay. Um, I just want to let you know a little bit about me. I was on the Onward Board Community Foundation of Cortez. I was on the Mancos Chamber of Commerce Board. I was the Vice President of the Mancos Water Conservancy Board. And I was the Director of the Mancos River Watershed Planning and Restoration Process, planning process that took place here some years ago. Um, I care deeply about agriculture, about the Mancos Valley, and about our water, and about our neighborhood. We ran a planning process in the Manx Valley that was stakeholder driven and Dick Perry was part of that when he owned that ranch and Mace Verde and a lot of the ranch holders, the Weavers, the Robins. Um, we came to a lot of collaborative results that expressed best practices and I raised close to a million dollars in grant funding from around the state and nationally for ranchers in the Mancos Valley. Why am I telling you all of this? Because as I stand here today before you, it may look as if we don't have a lot in common, you and I, but we do. I know you're not wearing hood earrings. I am, but we have a lot of com in common, and that specifically is that we care very deeply about the land, about successful agriculture businesses, and about everybody who lives within Montezuma County. I am here to propose that Mr. Mominy, who has bought several ranches in the area and owns up to 1,500 acres, recite this facility. It is in, literally, my site view from my living room. I trust Mr. Mominy will run a tight ship. He's an engineer. He's a kind man. He came and looked at and walked to my property with me and a group of us. He gave us a site tour. I think it's a good plan but I don't think it belongs in my living room. And I don't think any of you would want it in your living room, mitigation or not. And the county code specifically says that neighbors' property values will be protected. And you heard from Sarah Staber, already a buyer walked away given that there was going to be this facility. I don't deny Mr. Monomy this facility. I don't deny him making a profit. I don't deny him any of that. I think we do need this but I don't think it belongs where he has proposed it. And I think you would be wise to heed MB's words and ask him, work with him, let's all work together to recite it. Heck, I'll write a grant for $500,000 so he doesn't lose any money if he could recite it somewhere where it's not going to produce adverse impacts to our property rights and uh, property values and to our visuals. So that is my request of you today. Please delay this process. Let's talk to him. Let's look at all of his other land holdings. Let's recite this so that it can grow when the need exists, which it's going to need. It's going to exist in week two, probably, of this up and running. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Anybody else care to speak to this? Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Paul Bowman. I uh, own property at 5892 County Road 38, just downstream from Mr. Mamani. Is that mm -hmm. the correct pronunciation? Um, I have no quarrels with Mr. Mamani. Um, I believe his facility is well thought out. I don't believe that the location he has chosen is thought out at all. This is a precedent setting situation and none of you have a slaughterhouse in your backyard. Thank you. Didn't you give up your three minutes? I so too. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm teasing you. <laughs> I want to be, be correct. My name is Ann Patton. I live at 39780 Road G perhaps a mile and a half from Don, uh, Dan, sorry, Dan's uh, proposed slaughterhouse. It won't affect me. I'm around the curve. I'm not on the road. I like steak. But I do think that holding him to this original uh, proposal is something you all sh should consider completely. And I think that Dan will be back again, and Dan will want more. I don't blame Dan. He's an American. I would ask, Larry Don, that you recuse yourself, because you've already said that you are for this project and its enlargement, and you did this without listening to any public comment. So I ask that you not vote on this. And I Thank deny you. your, your ask. Why? I will vote. Why? Why? Is there anybody else wish to speak to this? Okay, we'll close this section of the public uh, public hearing of this the public comment section of the public hearing. Okay, Commissioner, do you have any other thoughts? I, actually, I do. I have one more question. <clears throat> for the planning department. So he has hit every component within his application. Is that correct? That's correct. So wh what I hate to see is that we have standards, we develop them, and we have people coming into our community to put up a new business, and then we start moving the target. Well, you can't hit a target if you don't have a place to go to. So Mr. Momney, if, if you've hit all those Thank you, I appreciate that. The only thing that I am I would ask is, if you don't have an issue with the lights, that's a very simple deal, if you could take care of that. The septic system is already one of the concerns, which is way over-designed. Um, when people talk about property value, you know, that has, that's something that has to be weighted and proven. I don't think you can say because something pops up, it's gonna decrease your value. Um, so that, that, that's, that's a concern to me, but we are here. Uh, our planning commission hears everything that goes in front of them. They are supposed to take the mitigation efforts to make sure that everything is done before it ever gets to us as a commission. When it gets to us, then we need to make a, we need to make a ruling on this. So just so that you understand, time is also money for Mr. Momney and we can't just continually wait. Um, if there are things in the land use code that you don't like, I, I would like to see a group come forward and say, look, here are some things that we want changed, not at the last minute of the last day that we have to make a decision based on what's in our land use code. That's all I have, sir. Well, for every action, there's a reaction. We already have another processing plant in, in this county that doesn't have a head count on it. He is also not USDA approved. They're at a cost to having your beef USDA approved, and maybe he can answer this. I don't know if it's 600 or $800 a head. Am, am I correct on that number? Can somebody give me the 
And the hard part is, is it's really what people charge. In other words, that's the, there's a cost to it because you have to pay for the inspector. Um, the way that we're set up to operate and the reason that it's designed this way is to be a batch process. So we designed it to mitigate the fact that we really should only require USDA inspector out one day a week. They come out on one day, they do all of their inspections, and then they move on. So that's the reason for the design of the process, and that's why I was talking about the way we intend to operate. It's not a typical um, a USDA inspector has to be on process for all of the critical operations and do their inspections to maintain your, your inspection. If you run a continuous operation, um, then you're required to have at least one inspector there full time. Um, and that's where they get those, some of those numbers. So the, we've yet to see what that cost is, but we believe that we've mitigated the cost by, by holding it to the one day a week. And the reason I bring that up is because uh, I believe at Sunnyside, it's either six or $800 a head. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna have the, the concern about having this thing explode you're going to have ranchers that will, uh, they won't go to his facility, they'll go to the other facility because they don't have that extra 600 or $800 a head fee on them. I do not see this blowing out of proportion. I do see um, the more stipulations that would be put on his would actually affect the other slaughterhouse because then people would, would migrate to the other slaughterhouse the, the more um, restrictions and I think that our land use code is clear it's uh, and I have listened I have studied I didn't hear anybody talk about what the reaction would be from if something was put on this one to the other slaughterhouse and, and so I would move that we approve this application without the 500 head and then if he exceeds the threshold then he would come back before the Board of Commissioners and go through a different permit. That was a motion. So in your motion, you said to remove the, his voluntary 500 head a, a year restriction? I do, and, and first of all, who's gonna count the 500 head? Number two, and it has nothing to do with, with if he ag is agreeable or not, I'm looking at the down the road, what it is going to do by changing our land use code with a stipulation like that, that we already have a packing plant that doesn't have that number. That's true. And who came up with 500? Why not 400? If she said 10 a week, that's, that's uh, 520. So why, why have a number? Anytime we, as commissioners, we start <laughs> limiting what we say the business can do, then they'll go to another place as far can as I'm concerned. Can I ask a clarification of something you, I understood you to say? Did you say part of it is if he exceeds 500, he needs to come back to have his use permit? To no, if, uh, I believe it's, is it a th if thousand a head for standards. a feed lot? For a feed lot, if it's a thousand a head, then you have to come b back and get a uh, industrial permit. A thousand head for what? Year? A feedlot in the land use code is actually a feedlot, not a meat processing yeah, facility. Different. And that would be a thousand animals or more contained within one major feedlot. That's an industrial agribusiness. Is that annually? Excuse me? Is that annually? I think is the question. I think is that annually? At any point in time. Or I understand. I would interpret it as at a time. Just, just at a time. Okay. But I mean, it doesn't stay, say that any more than that. That's just my interpretation. Is that if you have a thousand or more in your facility, not at a time. I don't like having the restriction of 500 either. And I, I said that right in the beginning. I think if, if you have a business plan and it down the road it's going to expand. You know you have to come back in because you're going to, um, well, you know, get outside of those. You'll get outside the standards. threshold standards of traffic. Then and, you know and all that. The, so the road counts and all of that will come into play. But by the way, before before we take, a, I want a little more discussion on this before we take action on Commissioner Sukla's uh, motion. I, I would, it would behoove me for anybody to drive by Mr. Menominee's place and drive past his driveway going down that road 
<coughs> and look at his place and know that, and, and I, 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 I guess I like the way you use the word slaughterhouse. I think it adds a little bit of drama and yeah, conviction to the, to the deal. Yeah. We've, got a, we've got, I guess you want to call that, we've got Bain's Custom Pack right out here, almost within the city limits of Cortez, and it's a slaughterhouse. And it's been there for 40 or 50 years. And it's not impacted any of their neighbors. None of the property values there in that neighborhood have been impacted by that. It's been a standalone business for years and years and years. So, so what, if you drove by Mr. Menominee's place and you looked at his building there, nobody on that road is gonna know that that's a processing plant or a slaughterhouse. You're gonna drive by that and you're gonna see a big metal building there with, with nothing to indicate. You can't see the animals, you can't see inside the, nobody's gonna know that. Okay. <laughs> you like ranch life or do you not like ranch life? Or do you yeah, like steak or not like steak? To live in the country. I live a peaceful life. My husband okay, I don't want to get into a debate with you, ma'am. But I'm just saying, this... Thank you. I think Mr. Mominy has followed all of the bullet points that we have expected him to meet. He's exceeded the thresholds of what we've asked him to do. Uh, I don't think this is going to impact your neighborhood like you are so drastically saying this is going to impact your neighborhood. I just don't see that happening. And uh, I, uh, you've already had your time to comment. Thank you, Mr. Doty. It's my turn to comment. So back to, we have a motion on the floor. I, I, I think the motion should be made as a motion, not a bunch of statements and then saying, and that's my motion. I did not hear a formal motion. Well, maybe you should. It was, a, it was a proper motion. I didn't hear it. I did. I'll, I'll second the motion well, with uh, removing the restriction of 500. I don't think it should be restricted at all. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to grant Mr. Mahomany his uh, special use permit application on a USDA processing facility located at uh, 6761 Road 39, Mancos, Colorado, with no restriction on numbers of cattle. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll now close this public hearing. <laughs>